I created these t-shirt designs with the help of an artificial intelligence image generator called DAL E2. And the best thing is, all of them were part of the free trial and can be used commercially. You can sign up to this tool as well and create 50 designs for free and I'm going to show you how to do that. As well as, I'm going to give you my opinion at the end of the video whether this new AI technology is threatening the existence of print-on-demand sellers. So you're probably thinking, what the hell is DAL E2? To. How does it work and how can we utilize it? And I think the best way to explain the tool is just to look at their homepage. It will be linked in the description as well if you want to have a further look into it. But essentially, it is a new AI system that can create realistic images from you just typing in a description. So whatever you type in, DALI 2 tries to create that as best as it can. Here is a few examples that they have on the homepage. So depending on what you choose here from these words, we're going to get different results back from DALI 2. These are just examples. So an astronaut riding a horse in a photorealistic style looks something like this. So there's different variations. And if you now change this to a pencil drawing, then DALI 2 also takes that into consideration and makes it look like someone's actually drawn this by hand. You could then also change this part of the sentence, playing basketball with cats in space, and there we go, it looks completely different. It's now in the style of a children's book illustration. So um, I think you can see right here that it's quite important what you actually tell the tool. You can specifically give it objects, then actions that those objects do, and the style that you want it to be created in. So if we do watercolor, we once again have this looking differently. Um, what's minimalist style? Let's see. All right, so not as much detail. The background is just flat. Another feature of the tool is you can upload images like this one on the left and then make different realistic edits to it. So um, you can select with these points right here, the location of the flamingo that's being added to the image and the outcome always looks different. And here's some different variations as well. Um, that the tool comes up with and yeah so that's pretty cool if you if you're into maybe poster design for example you want to sell posters you could easily add some things to your design that way or to your photos and there is some more features like it can it can recreate images in a different variation so I actually <laughs> kind of want to try this with like a family photo and just see what the tool comes up with. Scrolling down, there's also an explanation video, which I highly recommend watching. Anyway, so let's actually jump into the tool. Um, you can sign up yourself where it says join waitlist. You just have to enter some details and then you'll have to wait a few days. I don't know how long it usually takes on average. For me, I think it only took like a day or two. So this is what it looks like once you've been invited to join the tool and you've logged into your account. So you've got your search mask here at the top where you can type in whatever you want. That's essentially your playground. And then you can hit generate. And at the bottom, we also see some example pictures and you also always see the text that's been input to create them, which is really handy to actually go through because you get an idea of um, how, to, how to generate different styles, like high quality photo, for example, might be a good phrase to get something really, really crisp and realistic looking. Whereas cartoon, as we can see right here, cartoon of a cat catching a mouse gives you a more sort of digitally drawn feel. And yeah, so let's actually come up with something to type in up here so I can show you an example. I found that adding kawaii can help with getting that t-shirt design illustration style. But let's say we put a kawaii unicorn drinking coffee and wearing a Christmas hat. I think I'll put digital art at the end because that usually helps with the style. And if we click generate, as we can see, it loads for a little while. And then once it's done, you get four options usually, and you can click through them, investigate them further. I think that one looks pretty cool. That's definitely got potential. Um, some of the other ones, colors are quite nice as well. Quite often, the results can be a bit weird. Like I've had dogs that have three legs and stuff like that because the tool isn't perfect. It's still learning, right? It's artificial intelligence. And the more it's being used, the more inputs and information is fed into it, the better it gets. But considering it's really new, it's very impressive how much you can actually do with this. 
Again, this style of uh, design is really neat. Looks like a t-shirt design. And if we want to look back at some of the things that I created yesterday when I got access to this, uh, I, I couldn't stop doing it. It was so much fun. It's very addictive. You kind of think when you're starting out, you, you won't get many ideas, but lots of things just pop into your head and you want to see what the tool uh, makes them look like. So here we've got the raccoon that I made. Um, that was at the start of the video. I just typed in kawaii raccoon drinking a strawberry milkshake as digital art and I think this is sort of the best result or cutest result. Um, I mean this is a cool option as well but there's no body to the animal and some of it is cut off here on the on the corner like the drink. That's why that's not very usable unless you go further into it and edit it. But I think those are some pretty nice results for that search term. It doesn't always work that perfectly. Let me show you an example. Uh, where it didn't work too well. Here I wanted to do an axolotl wearing a Christmas hat and eating ramen, which I'm guessing the tool doesn't have that much info on axolotls compared to unicorns. And maybe that's why it looks a bit wonky or maybe I just didn't type in the right thing for it to, to give me what I want. It is definitely a learning curve. It's not like you just type in anything to here and it brings you back perfect results. You have to work with the tool in a sense to tell it exactly what you want or in a, in a good way so it understands you. If you actually type in t-shirt design, it doesn't really come back with good results. Like I, I wanted to have a design that says son, brother, gaming legend, and that features a controller. I also put t-shirt design at the start, but the tool seems to, when you when you input t-shirt design, it seems to try and pull words as well, because a lot of t-shirts have words on them, and that doesn't work at all. Like it, it doesn't know how to use letters yet, let's say that. So the pixel art, search phrase is quite cool. Like I thought this design looks amazing. Uh, it could probably work well as a sticker. If you zoomed in on it, it looks a bit terrible, but that's the idea of pixel art, right? When, once it's smaller, um, it makes more sense. You've got a dabbing unicorn wearing a Santa hat. So um, again, some of these are all right, like this one maybe, but this on the left where the horn is coming out the eye <laughs> does look a bit creepy. And the donut, this is another cool thing to consider. If you put in 3D render, then you get a, a completely different quality of results. This image looks really cool in my opinion. And yes, it's not ideal for t-shirt design, like I overlaid that piece of text and, and made it into t-shirt design, but I think these sort of 3D renders would be really cool for posters. You can also, if you like one of these, but you want to see variations, click on these dots right here in the top right corner and generate variations. And then it goes through the process again, it takes that picture that you selected as inspiration. So here we go, we see the original image on the left and then we can flick through the new ideas it's come up with based on that original one. This is really cool with the different color sprinkles. I think that's a nice variation. So I think you get the idea. If you want to download any of them, you just click the same dots and hit download. And unfortunately, they are in JPEG format. So if you've got um, something like this right here and you want to have it without a background, with a transparent background, then you will have to go into Photoshop or like a different photo editing tool where you can erase the background from the image. I was actually quite impressed with this result as well. Might not work perfectly for a t-shirt design, but we've got a pumpkin that looks like a dinosaur face in digital art format. And some of these results look pretty damn cool. I mean, they look a bit aggressive, but uh, definitely creative. And that's the sort of ideas that can do really well for Halloween, for example, where you combine popular topics with a Halloween theme. So you can really, really be creative with this tool and just uh, let your mind flow. And trust me, it's very, very fun to do this. So it's definitely worth checking out. It's free to join. As I said, you get 50 credits and then you get 15 every month on top of that. So they refill for free automatically. And if you want to, or if you, if you run out of them, uh, then you'll have to buy more. I think it's like $15 for 100 credits, which is all right, I think, considering this is a new, technology and it's so advanced. And here, just in case you were worried, uh, we've got the terms of use and it says you may use the generations or the images for any legal purpose, including for commercial use. So it's definitely allowed to take what you generate yourself, download it and sell it as a t-shirt design. Like there's no problem with that. So this tool is very cool and exciting, but does it pose a threat to print on demand sellers? Because you might think this artificial intelligence can create better t-shirt designs than me. So what's the point of me even trying to sell t-shirts if a, a machine can do it better? And I think that's a very pessimistic way of looking at it. Some of you will feel like this tool is better than you. 
uh, in terms of design perspective, but that is, as we know, only a, a small part to print on demand. There's way more to it than just designing. And um, whilst there is some cool stuff that comes out of this tool, a lot of it is also very, very terrible or not really usable. So the tool is still learning and it also heavily depends on who is on the driver's seat. Just like Adobe Illustrator or Canva, their software or tools that help us with our process but it very much depends on how you use the tool. It's not like the tool can just magically do everything perfectly itself. It still has to be operated by someone. So I think the better way of looking at this is DAL E2 is an amazing way for us to express our creativity and then also utilize it for print on demand if we so wish. There is obviously limitations in the sense that if the tool doesn't have much information on a certain topic, like if it's a very, very niche thing, which there isn't many pictures about, or it just hasn't been taught well about this topic, then it will really struggle to come up with images. And also there's the limitation of money. So if you run out of credits, you're going to have to pay for more. So it's not like you can just create unlimited designs and uh, yeah, just wait for the perfect ones to come up. So I don't think this is actually threatening print on demand sellers, like maybe very far in the future, it's obviously hard to say how far this technology can advance and what the, the boundaries are, what the limitations are, whether there is any limitations, we don't know. It's a very sort of new area of technology, so it's hard to say where it will go. But at the moment or for the near future, I don't think this is going to be a, a threat to print on demand. It is going to be more of a benefit. But I'm curious to see what you think as well. Uh, definitely leave some comments down below whether you think this is a good thing for our sellers or a bad thing. Um, this is just my opinion, uh, so it doesn't mean that you have to agree with it. I'm very curious to see what you think. So if you found this topic of artificial intelligence very interesting, then you'd probably really enjoy watching this video right here, where I show you an AI tool that can help you find t-shirt design niches, and is actually also designed by the same company as DAL-E2.